Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to integrate Celery with Flask. So if you're not familiar with Celery already, just go down to the description below and you can click on links that take you to the first two videos that I made for Celery so you can get an understanding on how it works. But basically I'm using Celery to have asynchronous tasks run outside of um, a normal app process. So in this video, I'll be doing a pretty simple example integrating Celery with Flask. I'll use um, the function that I created in the first video, which is just a way to reverse a string. Pretty simple, but it's going to be done asynchronously. If you want a more complicated example, I have a video where I integrate SQL Alchemy into um, this Celery and Flask mix. So if you want to watch that video, just go to prettyprinted.com slash Flask Celery. And I'll have a link to that in the description below. So before I get into writing the code for this, let me just show you the process and how it works. And then I'll show you how to actually do it in the code. So let me start up the celery worker. And I have one task available, so dot reverse. And then I'm going to start up the Flask server. So it's running and I'll go to process is the name of the route. And um, I'll pass in a name. So this name will be reverse in the celery process, but it won't actually be returned to the user because it's being run outside of the uh, typical request response process. Like this process will only spawn the, the async request, but um, everything after that is a normal HTTP request. So I'll put in my name, Anthony, and it says I sent an async request. That's all I have it return. And here we can see it received a task um, celery example dot reverse and it said it succeeded and it returns uh, my name reverse so if I do something else like uh, pretty printed I send that then I see down here I get the result but it's not returned in my flask app it's done in celery so that's basically what I mean by integrating Flask and Celery. Flask initiates the process that gets uh, sent over to Celery to be executed. And I have my uh, table open here where you can see a few of the last few requests I did. I did these two just a minute ago, and then I tried one before this video, which failed. <laughs> so that's it. Now let's get into writing the code. So the first thing I need to do is import Flask. So from Flask, import Flask. The second thing I need to do is uh, import something related to Celery. So typically this would be an extension, but I'm not going to use an extension in this case. I'm going to follow a pattern that is on the Flask document site. So here it is. Basically it's this class that allows me to, or this function that allows me to combine the Flask configuration with the Celery configuration. And it also uses the Flask application context so I can call the Celery task from within Flask. So you can get that from the uh, site here where the documents are hosted. I'll put a link to this in the description below. So to use that, all I have to do is put it in a different file and do from Flask Celery, which is what I named the file, import make Celery. And then I'll do the standard init stuff. And I'm going to add some configuration. So Celery broker URL, uh, which is going to be my RabbitMQ server. So it's on localhost. And then celery backend. And this backend is the same um, configuration as like celery result backend, but here it's just called celery backend because of the uh, make celery function that I have here. So celery backend, which is just um, my database server, so I'll get the URI for it and paste it in here. And then celery equals make celery app. So you see it's used just like any other extension, but it's not actually an extension. I just have it in a separate file. And you'll notice that I'm using celery as the name instead of app because app is already used by the Flask app. So let me get the Flask app part started first, just to make sure everything works. So I'll say, um, I wanna pass in a name And I'll call this process name. And I just want to kind of mirror back the name. And then if name main, I'm going to run the app in debug mode. 
Okay, so let me start up the server. Python celery example. And it looks like it's running. So let me go to my local host and pass in my name. Okay, so the Flask app is working. So that was pretty simple. That's not really the important part. The important part is calling some celery task from within Flask. So to do that, I will first create a celery task. So I have to start with a decorator and I'm not calling it app. So I'm not doing app.task. I'm calling it celery. So I'm doing celery.task. And because I'm combining it in one file, uh, the name of the task that gets sent to the celery process could be a little weird. So I'm going to uh, make it explicit. So uh, in this case, the file name is celery example. And the name of the function that will follow is reverse. So if you don't put this name explicitly, it kind of infers the name for you. Um, and normally that works, but sometimes the name uh, isn't quite right when it gets past the celery. And you'll notice like a huge error message when this happens. So if you get that error message where like it can't find a task that you know is there, then um, try changing the name to something explicit to see if that works for you. So I'm going to use the same reverse function that I did in the other uh, videos. So it's going to take a string and simply return a string and then reverse it. So simple stuff. So let me start up the celery worker. So celery a, and then I'll put uh, the name of the file. So celery underscore example. And to make it explicit, I'll pass the celery object as well, because uh, there's some flask stuff in here and I don't want it to get confused. Otherwise there would be an error. So worker and then log level info. So I misspelled this. It should be AMQP. So let's restart. And we see that it has my one example here. So I want to call this one task from my Flask app when the user does something. So I'm going to reverse whatever name that they pass in. So to do that, I'll simply do reverse dot delay, which is how you call uh, a celery task. And then I'll pass in the name and then I'll return something that's not the result. Like um, I sent an async request. And the reason why I can't return the result is because it's not being run in the request anymore. Once I call this reverse dot delay, it sends it over to the celery process and then the celery process will do something. And then they're kind of disconnected at that point. Uh, I could make something where I can wait for the celery process to finish and then I can uh, get the value and send it back to the user in a different response, but it definitely can't happen in the same response. Otherwise you lose all the benefits of having celery in the first place. So I have this reverse dot delay, so I'll save that and my server should restart it. So now I'll send this and let's see if I can. So right now there have been no tasks sent. So I'll do that and it says I sent an async request and we can see here that my name pops up after 1.7 seconds that um, it's been reversed here. So if I pass in a different name like um, Python and do it, I see here that Python is now spelled backwards. And if I go to my task list, I have two results that were both successful and um, I can see what their task ID are. I can't see the result because it's a blob, but I can always access that blob from within something that's Celery enabled. But I did what I really wanted to do, which was uh, just send a task from a Flask app. So that's pretty much it for this video. Like I said, I have a more uh, involved example and a more realistic example where I uh, add a database in here. So I use SQL Alchemy and I use uh, Celery to insert a lot of data into the database because if I did it within the context of a request, it would take forever. So instead what I do in the video is I send a request, that request will then call um, a Celery task. Celery will run the, the task, which will insert a bunch of rows into the database, but the user won't have to wait forever for the rows to be inserted. So if you want to see that video, just go to prettyprinted.com slash flaskcelery, and then you can watch that video.
If you have any questions on this video, just leave me a message down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.